I hate this book so much that it made me hate reading anything. This book has poisoned my brain to the point where just any word of any kind just feels like an affront. This is not going to be going through point by point why this was a failure by Lucy Elman, why I don't think you should read it. That That's not what this is. This is not a book review. This is a fucking exorcism. I like, I don't even know how to talk about the, okay, hold on. We're getting into this thing. So the only way I can talk about books I truly hate is to get myself into a bit of a stupor. I haven't had a tequila shot in years. That's what this means to me. I just realized I did that in the wrong order. I think I just officially became 37 years old because a tequila shot just like shortened my lifespan. Ah, okay. Um, oh God, my life is flashing before my eyes. Full on, this is me complaining just to get the like poison out of my body. I just, I can't think about this book anymore. It was just, it was so far away from anything I value in literature that it just, it just makes me sad because I really, really, really wanted to like this book, but fuck is it garbage. So what I wanna do, just as an illustration of what this book is like and why I think it's possibly the worst thing that you can put into your brain. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna open to a page, page 478 in the middle of this book. And I'm just gonna talk about all the things that she talks about on one page just to give you a sense of what it's like to actually read this book. I feel like it's a feat of Herculean strength just for me to go back and read any of this. So you're welcome slash I'm sorry. I'm a little disappointed that I'm bringing any of this into your life, but here we go. Okay, so this is the content of a single page of this book. All right, so, okay, so she forgets a specific actor in a movie that she's trying to think of. And then she's talking about how that movie is basically just a joy ride on the White House lawn. And then she's talking about how she missed out on her son's babyhood. And then she's wondering if her mother was sorry to have missed out on her childhood. And then she's talking about the word obstreperous for three lines. The fact that women do twice as much housework as men. Then she talks about she'd rather watch a movie with wine than talk to her husband when he gets home from work. So she's really sad. Um, and then she talks about how her husband quote, likes the way she stands. Uh, and then she talks about how she had a dream about rehabilitating, quote, rehabilitating matzo balls. And then in this dream, the matzo balls were somehow human. And also the balls were somehow like deadbeat dads. Like seriously, like that's what it's like to read every single page of a 1000 page book. And guess what? That wasn't even a page. That was half a page. Imagine your brain doing that 2,000 times in one book. And that's not even bothering with the countless examples of like lyrics and random like chaotic jumping between thoughts and the lists. She has this weird tick where she gets hooked on a word and then starts to like rhyme off a bunch of words that either sound like that thing or remind her of that thing. So a Uranus diamond scooper doesn't sound too far-fetched to me. The fact that who's that woman who blogs about loving everybody and taking each day as it comes and never stressing out? Hypnotherapy, standard life, barrel, rib, recoil, pad, cocking, lever, cock. The fact that I've never used the word in my life. Gina Lollabrigida, Sophia Loren, Raquel Welch, Bridget Bardot, Marilyn Monroe, the fact that the PTA's stress-busting instruction sheet also recommends getting your kids to bake cookies, but personally I don't. That's an actual fucking sentence. That's what it's like to read every sentence of this whole fucking book. This is not how people think. And for everyone to say that this is like this brilliant stream of consciousness document. Like this is like, like I've never been inside another person's head like this in my whole, like this is, no, you haven't. Cause this is not what it's like to be inside of someone's head. Ah! I legitimately think you could randomly pick 200 random page numbers and read them, you know, back to back. I honestly don't think that your experience would change all that much. You could read almost every page of this book independently and it would not change 
how you felt about this person, about this story, about this reading experience. Thousands of writers could write this book. I swear to God. Like, it's not like this is some, like, unique thing that can only come from her brain. She was just the one person, like, psychotic enough and arrogant enough to think that this kind of book should exist and, and hold some kind of value for people. Like once they get into like the rhythm of how she structures this sentence, any legitimate like good writer could make this. It's not that good. You wanna know how not that good it is? I gave up reading this after 650 pages. Imagine how much you have to hate a book to give up on it after 650 pages. Like every single day that I wake up, I have less life to live than the day before. Why would I spend any of that time reading any of this filth? And can I just address this notion that I've seen peddled in a couple of places that the book needed, that it needed to be a thousand pages long. No book that has ever been written has needed to be a thousand pages long. Full stop. This book specifically didn't need to be more than 300. If this book was 300 pages long, I think it would have gotten a, like a four star rating for me. I appreciate what she's doing and it was interesting just to a degree. The fact that the book is this long and you need to go through that slog for, according to just audiobook releases, I think 38 hours. Think of that sentence that I read to you before. Imagine doing that for 38 hours. No one needs to go through that experience. Like to the point, like it's just, it's, it, this is one of the most just arrogant, disrespectful, to your audience books I can just ever remember encountering. I just, the idea that someone should have to read through this for that long and for you to think that each of those words, every one of those sentences, each page, every bizarre list, every descent into madness involved in this book. Like, do you think that every one of those is worthwhile and that none of this could be cut? that none of that this is that this couldn't possibly have been shorter is just insane explain to me anyone who loved this book explain to me what this book does in a thousand pages that it could not have possibly have done with 300 pages at a certain point it's just like i have a fucking life to live it's just it's an imposition like the <laughs> like <laughs> How? Like, I have so many friends who've read this book who are like, I, I, I enjoy it, I'm glad to have read it, but it took me seven months to read it. That's like, just bonkers. To, like, that's not a good book. If it takes you seven months to read a book, that's something you are forcing yourself to read. You're not reading it because you think it's filling you up in some way. You're trying to get to the end slowly but surely. You're a person who wants to have read this book. I think people love to have read this book. I don't think many people at all love the experience of reading this book. Reading Ducks Newberry Port is literally just like, it's like a trial. It honestly makes me mad every single time <laughs> I find out another one of my friends read this book and like doesn't hate it. People out there, let me like hold your face through the camera. It's okay. It's okay if you didn't like this book. For some reason, the community out there doesn't want you to feel like it's okay if you hated this book. Like you're lesser somehow if you didn't like this book. Like, like you're wanting in some facet. And there's some people out there who respect you so much more if you'll just say like, this thing was the bane of my fucking existence and if I could light it on fire and not have people on the internet yell at me, I so would. I don't know if people will get this or agree with this, but I think that like writers who produce books this long have a greater obligation than other writers to justify the claim on their reader's time while reading the thing that they wrote. Like I, I, I would argue you could read six 250 page books in the time it would take you to read this book easily. Without a question, you could do that. How is it worth that? 
How is this one book worth that? Well, I promised I wasn't gonna harp on the whole, the fact that thing. I read yesterday that apparently, if you check on Kindle, it'll show you this, the phrase, the fact that, is used over 16,000 times. God, why, why, why are you, why? Ah! Do anything else, do anything else with your whole life. Then read, like seriously, read any other book. Insert shitty book here. I don't, I don't care. This is not worth your time at all. I don't know how a book can be so long and be about so little. There's nothing charming about this novel. There's nothing clever about this novel. In fact, like I, I legitimately think it's insulting. Like I get what Elman was trying to do here, but like every time I hear someone pitch this book as like Moby Dick in the kitchen, I just want to like throw this book off a bridge. It might be the best book I've ever read in my life that just flat out sucks. I will say this, I completely understand why a professor or a critic or a writer would read a book like this and admire it and understand like what it's doing and the craft it takes to put it together. I cannot imagine a regular person who goes to a regular job who has nothing to do with the construction of the novel reading this book and thinking that time was time well spent. The amount of amazing books that have been written in this world <laughs> that people can read instead of this thing and then they choose to read this thing. I just, I, like, oh my lord. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired of talking about this book. I'm tired of thinking about this book. I'm tired of worrying about this book. I'm tired of this book being in my life in a way where like, I can't move on. I can't move past it onto better, more important, more relevant to my life things until this is out of my brain. And that, that's why I'm making this video because I'm hoping it'll move that along because I haven't been able to read and enjoy another book in like six weeks, now that I've talked about it so much, I think I'm just gonna throw it in the garbage. I can't have this in my house anymore. It feels like a cursed item. This is like one of the horcruxes, basically. There is an argument out there that this book is interesting because it's applying kind of a non-American style of novel to the American experience. And, and that's an interesting approach. Sure, yeah, that's, that, that's interesting. Like, I'm glad Someone out there has tried it. Um, doesn't make it a better book to read. It still sucks. At the end of this video, I'm nervous because I thought by the end of this, I would have like expelled this from my body. And the more and more I talk about it, the more I just feel like it's a part of me now. And it scares the living shit out of me because I just, I don't wanna carry this around for any longer than I have to. And I feel like when I'm finished this and I upload it, I'm gonna be no better off than I was before I did this. This is why I need to put this in the garbage because I just, I need, I need, to, I need to physically change something about this in my life to see if that helps. I hope this is helpful for myself. I don't even care about you. Like, to be honest, this wasn't for any of you. This is for myself and my own mental health. I hope it helps me move on and start April with a clean slate. If me reading this book has any contribution to the reading community, it's, it's that like I prevented one fucking person from feeling like this. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Rick and I promise I'll be more positive in every review that ever follows this one. Thanks for watching. Bye.